Lo, bookworms and howlers. It's time to call for an iron rain here because the old brother <laughs> Gringo said he's going to flip tables if I didn't. <laughs> Guys, we're back to talk a little iron gold. Book number four of the Red Rising Saga, or like I like to call it, book one of the sequel series. But I'm not alone. As always, I am joined by the sovereign Aaron Alloon. How are you feeling tonight? Low. I'm, uh, well, I'm feeling low. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little sick, as I know you are. So we're gonna get through this together. Yeah, no, Ben's gonna try. To I make need it some stem this. shots. <laughs> well, Ben, she might make you feel like a goblin by the end of this. You, you really can call you Ben Albarca. You'll be our goblin that if she makes true. you sick, right? It is true. I'll have to dodge her germs. I did test negative for everything. So good. Good. You're welcome. That's, That's great. That's great. <laughs> uh, so, guys, when Iron Gold came out, I'm not gonna lie, and I want you guys to to, to be truthful here. I thought it was a cash grab. I was like, oh, okay, this feels like the thing where he had a kind of, because I'd finished the three. I was like, it feels kind of like he had a complete story. He's like, oh, this kind of had more success than I thought. Let me see if I can keep that gravy train going. Who could blame him, right? So when I read the book, I was stunned at how much I really, really did like it. And I think there's several reasons. But how did you guys, what did you go into it think? Or you think, we think this was going to be like, oh, well, we'll see what happens. Or were you just like, give me more. I'm just excited to have more. I think the latter, um I don't know. I remember being surprised that there was going to be a sequel just because, like you said, the first trilogy kind of wrapped up nicely um, and it felt like it had a bow on it. Yeah. But um, I was super excited to to have the option of, of reading more yeah. for sure. I, I'm not too... I'm kind of like... Uh, you know, you can spoon feed me and I'll like it. So <laughs> unlike you, Mike, <laughs> you're looking for I why, was, why things are going maybe, on. I think, and I think maybe that's because, you know, this book does get a lot darker, I think, than those first three. So maybe that maybe that kind of affecting my memories a little bit about being like, that's kind of took me to a dark place. Now, look, I love them. Big Grim Dark fan. Uh, I love that he aged up the characters. I love that he starts asking them really hard questions of, you know, hey, are we still the good guys? Things like that. And uh, with this book, I just felt like it, it grew up. It really did. Mm -hmm. And I love that he great, aged up his characters. And like I said, the content just felt, I don't think he slowed it down, but I think, you know, in that first series, everyone's always like, oh man, it's just moving so, just so, so quick. Mm -hmm. But he actually takes a, a breath in these sequel books. And I just, I love the pacing here. But I mean, are you surprised that there's still so many people who either haven't read this or they start reading it and they just quit because it's they just, they just aren't feeling it. Are you still surprised it's, it's that many people? I didn't, I don't know of anyone that has quit, but yeah, I do know a lot of people that are waiting for, uh, mm. the second trilogy now. What do you call it? Quattro? Now I just got to call it the sequel series. It's hard. Yeah. The series. Um, there, yeah. Um, it surprises me just cause yeah, I, I always want more, so I don't see how you could wait. I think I understand sometimes why people have issues with it. I do agree that like, there's a couple of things like the multiple POVs is a little jarring at first, especially when you're so used to being inside of Darrow's head. Um, so I can understand how that could like throw people off. It did throw me off too, but I just, I, I really enjoyed those characters and that perspective. And so when I got into it, I was like, okay, yeah, I, I can follow all of these people. And then there's also the aspect that like Darrow is fucking up like constantly yeah, in this no book. Kidding, no kidding. Yeah. He really <laughs> falls. Who's fine. Oh, he's just a little goody two. He does he does nothing wrong, dude. Get to the sequel book. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you're just like, oh my god, Darrow, do something right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Oh, um, Albert's uh, showing his big brain here. It's a sequel Quart quartet. A quartet, mm, yeah, nice. which is Albert. also a musical group. <laughs> Can be, can be. Uh, so yeah, I've seen that a lot. Some people said they went into it right after they finished Morningstar. Maybe they needed to take that quick little break. And I think maybe yeah. that's why it worked so well for me. So I did take that little bit of, of a break first. But like I said, uh, considerably darker, I think, than the first three books. A lot more political intrigue, a lot more warring houses stuff, which I was a big fantasy fan. I was all about that. Uh, to me, this book feels so much like a successor to dune like in pierce brown's kind of tribute to dune so again that's something i was very very excited about mm -hmm. and since i've talked to him and know that that was an influence of his i mean lysander in this book basically recites his own version of the litany against fear from dune i'm like right. Right. Yeah, it's really really great i read dune too but uh i i just love it. i mean 10 years later and you just basically see like none of those idealized plans that our heroes had didn't seem like they quite came to fruition, did it? It's like this this ruling thing isn't quite as easy as you thought it was going to be. And I just love that. 
Yeah, and seeing like especially from Lyria's point of view, the the sad fact that maybe uh, some people wanted to stay in the mines and mm -hmm. maybe not everyone wants to be liberated. Especially Even when they when, got liberated, they just they were kind of failed in that process. Yeah and, yeah, and you know everyone needs a purpose. They're just bringing them into camps yeah. and with no job or you know it's uh, and not enough food. Yeah, you get a viewpoint <laughs> there, and it looks like not much has really changed for the Reds. At right. least not for the yeah. better, you know, necessarily. So, ooh, ooh, we got some candy bars. All right, you know? right. <laughs> uh, life is still terrible down here, but uh, <laughs> I, I think that is kind of a, a big standoffish point. Is you know. Even if people were more accepting, okay, we're going to go multi-POV instead of just Darrow. Well, you get two new characters. People are like, no, no, I got my characters I love. Why are you doing giving me these two new characters here for you? you know? And I think that's really hard for some people because yep. they complain out here. Oh, I didn't really like Larry. I didn't really like Ephraim. And I'm like, well, you know, give mm -hmm. him some time. He's, he's pretty good at this character thing. I think he'll get you there yeah. eventually. But with we'll Lyria, I, I, I did not like her <laughs> when she was suffering. Um, I didn't really like her until towards the end of the book and then i really like her now after or during dark age so i think if you if you haven't read dark age yet you know give lyria a chance now because she really comes into her also own. like on the perspective of a reread i think her character's point of view is like you appreciate it a lot more at first you're just kind of like she's complaining about all your favorites <laughs> and you're kind of like shut up like <laughs> these are all my favorite friends. characters yeah Easy. get over it <laughs> oh your whole family died <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then you kind of you read that whole story in iron gold and then you go back and you kind of read it again and you're like well she's you know she's got a lot of really good points oh well, I'm yeah, cool. yeah. I'm cool. look i don't hold grudges but i remember i never forget and i'm like wait yeah. Fuck Gamma. Gamma was an <laughs> asshole from the first yeah. book. You know? So I was already kind of like standoff for that. Uh, go read books. Thank you so much. I appreciate you giving the books a try. I'm glad you did. He says it's like his favorite series now. And that yes. is the goal. That's the goal to get more people to try it. So I'm glad that you, you did do that. So let's dive into the actual story now. How about part one? It's called Wind. We see Darrow in the Seventh Legion uh, returning to Luna after a victory on Mercury. Everything's going great, right? So I think at first, I think the first big thing is like, wait, it, it's 10 years. They're still having war with the Ash Lords still 10 years <laughs> later. The Ash so, Lords. <laughs> yeah, it was actually quite, quite surprising to me to see that, wow, they're still in this 10 years later. Definitely. And how it had split up kind of they've they're ruling some planets and then the, the core planets are kind of still under the society rule. So um, that was, that just shows you how formidable opponent that the society and the Ash Lord were, I feel like. Right, right. I'm sorry. I was reading at the same time. I'm just, <laughs> uh, other people are, are defending Lyria down here. So that's good. Yeah. She does have some some people on her sorry, side. Sorry, I was harsh. I'm saying I do like Lyria. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just not at first. Yeah, no, it, it takes one. And I think that that's, that's just the kind of writer that he is, you know, like how George R. R. Martin will be like, hey, here's this detestable Jamie Lannister. And you're like, there's no way I'm going to cheer for this character. And then a couple of right. like, Damn it, you know, because <laughs> bit of a writer. So uh just just trust the process. Is what I keep telling everybody, trust the process. I think that what surprised me here at the beginning is now has Dancer become one of those things he hates? Is he a big old politician now? Yes. He's, 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 he's look, I knew he was gonna be salty with, with Darrow because you know Darrow gave up the sons that were in the outer rim. I knew that was gonna be kind of salty, yeah. but here he's quite pissed off that you know, hey, yeah, you won on Mer on Mercury there with the iron rain that we told you not to do. And you did it anyway. So it, it was quite stunning to me to see, okay, I thought that their relationship would be a little fractured because of that. But to see him actually being like a, a big old politician was just like completely shocking to me. But, you know, a lot could change in 10 years, right? Yeah. And it, you see the start of, uh, <clears throat> you know, we don't want Darrow the warlord now that we have power like you can right. get in line or you know thanks thanks for handing us the the reins but now you can get in line so you already see the start of that conflict which of course goes throughout the whole book people know i'm doing a live stream so they gotta make sure they text me while i'm doing this okay yeah good times. <laughs> uh so uh let's see here uh I got notes, but like I said, guys, in the comments, if I'm forgetting stuff, feel free to jump in because uh, I never claim to be perfect at this. And, uh, you know, I have the experts on here, but, you know, they're they're, they're, they're not filling in the blanks for me. So, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You're so, leading uh, the show. Even though, <laughs> it's you know, your YouTube channel. <laughs> even though, even though uh, what, what uh, 
Cassius is kind of out of this part of the story now. Oh, Julia isn't. So Dancer finds a way to bring her back in the Ugh, story. Gross. And use her against the Darrow. Wants to eat Darrow's yeah. heart still. Yeah. I, you think she's still like ignoring breakfast every single morning? I think she hasn't eaten in like the she's last 12 years. Waiting, no way. waiting until she can eat Darrow's heart? Or did she finally let that go a little bit? Did hunger? She's eating something. Maybe just very little bit. But she's eating she's eating very focused children. on heart, I think. Uh, like a boat of no confidence against Darrow. And you can see why, well, okay, maybe I would say I can understand being a little disillusioned with Darrow. This is where you start getting those hard questions of like, look, yeah, you were a symbol and stuff, but it's been 10 years, dude. We're still doing this. Right. And what, how many people, I mean, how many millions have died since you went to fix everything, you know? And that's, mm -hmm. that's the big question, you know, because Darrow is very much a, hey, I'll make that decision to save 10,000 over 5,000 every single time. No problem at all. It's all a numbers game. It's all math to him. Whereas, you know, uh, I'll dance right. He just wants to, you know, save everybody, but he doesn't really have the answers, but he knows that Darrow doesn't have them. Right. And, and it's so hard, especially in a war situation when you kind of need someone making decisions and making tough decisions because you can't take everything to a vote every single time and like wait on, the uh, power of democracy to take place all the time, especially in a war when you need to be kind of nimble and reactive and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So I think that's what Daryl's kind of pushing up against is like in the Republic in the Republic. Now their representative, you know, they, there's a lot of people that are in on decision-making, but and they kind of need him to also just be the decision maker. <laughs> clearly the politicians have their heads up their asses because they don't see that Julia is clearly like yeah. a part of the ass lord scheme. How you could ever trust her in that situation. I'd Are you going to call him the ass lord yeah. the whole time? I can't believe I haven't. I mean, <laughs> oh, he doesn't sorry. deserve a real name. Yeah, what Albert brings up here, yeah, basically that is that that age old question: Would you replace one tyrant with another? You know, are we becoming those people we said we weren't going to become? And we've seen Dancer do it, and I think that now he's kind of like afraid to see Darrow, you know, do the same thing. Right, um, but that's gosh. where like the society can take advantage of them, and then they find those cracks, they can pry them apart. So it's just, it's a tough situation. It, there's not not a good answer a lot of the time for that. So, mm. so you guys want to talk about Lyria? Let's talk about Lyria. Oh, okay, so Gamma Red. Uh, first you get it like set up. Now I've heard one of the big complaints. I don't audio book, but I've heard one of the big complaints is like the audio book of mm -hmm. the character is terrible. Is I, mean, I don't she, know. Yeah, she she's reads. Tough. She's <laughs> tough, and she reads really slow. So like that's another tough thing. Like the, the I, pacing I would say is the just... Lyria audio book narrator in this and the Lysander one are both difficult. Yeah, Lysander one's pretty flat. He just has like I know I know he's like a calculating character. But that guy is like so flat with his yeah. voice. It's personality like, like a dead moth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just hard. You're going from like one of the best with TGR to <laughs> one of the not best. Yeah, and she and she's just like I don't know. She doesn't really capture the character the right yeah. way. I don't and they think. they do switch the um, actors. That is definitely better in the, Dark Age in for those Dark two Age characters. Dark Age audiobook, so. yeah, something they fix for sure. <laughs> the Lord of Ass. Yeah. Huzzah. Now, hey, uh, I'm glad you're here. Arm Armin's the one who introduced me to this series. And he was actually oh, nice. quite crushed yeah. when I didn't really like Red Rising Book <laughs> One that much at first. He was actually quite destroyed about it. So the fact that we've come full circle here. I was upset about it too when yeah. I found out after the fact. <laughs> uh so uh uh, uh I am kind of like with Leary, I'm like, whatever, yeah, gamma, okay, whatever. And then like seeing her whole family get like wiped out. Like that is when I'm like, okay, rough. This is different because I was like, yeah. look, the first three books, I wouldn't call them sunshine and rainbows, but this is where it's like, he's getting really descriptive here. He's really, I mean, this is just horrifying stuff. Heartbreaking. Man, I think shoes. So good. Yeah. The shoes, like her, the interaction with her dad, like right um, when she has to leave him. I mean, like, oh my God. Don't that, get me wrong. I'm like sobbing the whole time. <laughs> yeah, that killed me. I mean, the, the dad stuff. That's so tough. Yeah, that was. Really yeah. Tough. And then she's like, move. basically sees her brother get turned to like SpaghettiOs right in front of right. her face. Like, oh my God, man, what is this? What am I and it all starts happening so fast. And then yeah. it's just one thing after another. And, and then she's just all alone. And it's like, damn. <laughs> captures chaos. So good. Daddy. When, just when everything is going to shit, he captures yeah. it so damn good man it's just it's wild it's just so wild i i mean this time i reading i'm just like it's i, I know it's coming this time and i'm still like it's just as intense as it was the first time and it's like okay well i mean i may not like the character because i don't know the character yet but you know hey i've at least 
kind of hard not to feel sympathetic for for what's going right. on here. So we see that Har- uh, Harmony is still up to her terrorist bullshit. Mm-hmm. She's leading the red hand now. So talk about hating a bad <laughs> <Yeah>. guy. <laughs> right? I like a lot of bad guys. I hate Harmony. Oh, she's, she's the, the worst. <laughs> she's she has no redeeming qualities. Yeah, I've got a lot of people on the Discord who think that she's also the queen of the syndicate. And I'm like, that'd be a lot of double duty. But I was like, also, they ain't Harmony style. Harmony styles blow shit up, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> she isn't calculating and she doesn't think. She, uh, it's she possible, acts, though. Acts, acts first, think never. Is that where you're leaning? Oh, see, I would. <laughs> I don't know. Cause we can get to we can get to that when we get to that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I I had theories, and I'll just go ahead and say they were wrong. Let's just put them that way. Our theories were also incorrect. Yes, we had a lot good. of wrong theories. <laughs> uh, that so, could be harmony. We I don't mean, know yet. I guess I technically you would say she's she's saved by Kavax, Kavax, and then then she saves Kavax. Is yeah. that how you would put it? Yeah. So she he saves them, and then and then she saves him from drowning. I'm just like hyped. I'm like, all right, cool. We got we got the Telemannus here, so. I'm like, okay, even if you're introducing me to these new characters, you know, put them around some characters I'm familiar with. Yeah. And they tell me, yeah, oh, and you, you add Sophocles to anything, I'm going to be more excited. Right? That relationship between Kavix and, so sweet. and Lyria is amazing. I, I love that. His quote uh, in the in this scene to keep moving, I forgot the quote. Yeah. It's really uh, Father Kavax. <laughs> I yeah, just, he like, has some the, just the jelly beans in her pocket to make it look right. like Kavax, like or, or so or just choosing her. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, he just has some like incredible lines uh, in this book. Yeah, this book uh, gives us great Telemannus energy, especially from Kavax, and then you know, obviously, great Ephraim humor, and you know, we just I feel like there's a we go deeper into each character, and mm-hmm. yeah. I like I like that we get all this softness from comics. Look, uh, Spencer, I can't say it's just the feedback I got. I haven't listened to it. Someone told me it sounds like if Scrooge McDuck sucked on helium. That's what somebody told me she sounded. Oh, no, and I'm that like, bad. that doesn't sound entertaining. So I, I don't know. I can't. I, say. I I thought she was a little like melodramatic with it, probably. Yeah my my main thing was the speed. So yeah. once. You know, if I speed her up to like 1.5, it's I like it more. I had to like speed her up and I had to slow Lysander's. I know. And, down. and then yeah. when they're back to back, you're like, fuck, yeah. I'm driving, like trying to slow them down. <laughs> yeah, I guess having different narrators, that would be yeah. different because I guess they're not all going to be talking in the same pace, are they? Yeah. Uh, so he like he agrees to take her off the planet as thanks for, for saving her life, even though uh, I, I think it's his, it's his daughter who, who's like real shitty about it. Yeah. Z- Zana? What? I think not Xanax. Gonna, <laughs> I think it is Xana though. Xana. Yeah. There might be a Xanax in this series somewhere. <laughs> no, <I don't> <laughs> That's wrong. Ephraim would know about this. Yeah, Ephraim. <laughs> Let's talk about weird. Ephraim. Okay, so I'm excited. I'm like, okay. At first, I was like, another red. Oh man, I was hoping to get like a blue or something. But we get a gray, so mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. Uh, Ephraim, this guy basically has like a, a death wish, and he was never actually married to Trig. They were just like yeah, betrothed, okay. right? They were engaged. Yeah. And, boy, but, yeah. but basically they just they treat it like that because holiday still considers him his, his brother her brother-in-law and all those kind of things so just kind of like like roll with that like i said i didn't i didn't remember that they mentioned him in the uh original yeah. trilogy but why would i it's you know? a drive-by yeah. mention <laughs> yeah. but he's not uh he's not too happy with his life uh does little uh little odd jobs and uh with his with his crew love volga by the way i, I feel like volga is our ragnar replacement you feel like that <laughs> yeah for sure volga is like but in our, a sweet way yeah one of our all-time favorites she's more sure. like a original pax replacement yeah and i think with this one it's like people were not really liking Ephraim because of the way that he treats volga <laughs> you know he's real shit <laughs> yeah here, you know so i think that we automatically feel but that 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 my- thing with obsidian's Hurt people, hurt people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. It, 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 any stuff, any stuff with a heist is always a lot of fun for me. So oh, I, was, I was on board with oh, it yeah. right that away. Was so great. So I, he's, yeah, he's great. At, you know, holidays like get over it. It's been ten years. It's yeah. time to move on with your life. I'm gonna quit coming here, and he's ready to throw himself over the bridge before you know he gets apprehended by a. Uh, forget the guy's name but uh basically get the duke of hands which is a very interesting mm-hmm. character who uh cuts people's hands off you know so he, he's quite, very yeah, scary yeah, <laughs> yeah he's quite terrifying uh but uh wants him to do a job for them and basically pull off this this biggest heist ever and we the reader don't get to know what that is until later yeah and yeah so uh, lots of cool things i think we do get a, a mention of lightbringer 
in this section. Yes, because yeah. they steal it, right? They're, it's like uh, they steal the Selenius's sword. razor, right? Razor. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't remember that at all. So. Yeah. Well, I wonder how that's going to play back in. I'm obviously we got the, we got the unicorn on the front cover there. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're like <laughs> into that uh, eventually. So, uh, uh, he takes his team, tells them we're going to pull up the highest, and they're like, "Not really." And then he tells them how much money it is or whatever, and they're like, "Yeah, okay." So, okay. and they're like, "We basically have to do it, or they'll kill all of us." Right. That that does that does <laughs> light a little fire under your head a little bit. I think that, that that helps a little bit. So, how about Lysander, who's all grown up now? He's a man now. Let me He's tell a you, boy guys, man. Darrow, you should have fired him out of the airlock like President <laughs> Ross on a Battlestar Galactica. Because I was like, this was the biggest one where I was like, okay, I can get behind everything. I mean, you bombed the shipyards. It was a bad idea. You know, you gave up the suns. Bad idea. Mm -hmm. But if you just fired Lysander out of the airlock, <laughs> you probably would have solved a lot of my lingering concerns. And so I'm just saying now, I'm not telling you how this is going. I'm just saying I was already like, Oh God, I knew it. I knew this was going to be a problem as soon as I saw he was a POV character, but I was excited to see Cassius again. Cause I do feel yeah. like as much as I like Cassius, I do feel like in that first trilogy, I'm like, I just want more Cassius. Yeah, you don't get three, time he time. just yeah. kind of was, you know, right there. So I'm excited that we're going to get to see more of Cassius this time. And, and this version of Cassius reminds me of like Han Solo, heartbroken <laughs> out in space <laughs> spending time licking his wounds yeah 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 he's, he's got a little kind of a down on his luck on a, rogue yeah on like an yeah. antique beat up ship that Still everybody's sexy. Like, just flying yeah. this thing yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a not the character arc i expected but i just i guess i didn't expect cassius and lysander to still be together here you know but uh, i guess took him under his wing Gregor, he lost. The ward. you don't exactly be like okay well i guess you're old enough now see you later you know right. but, uh you got to hope that maybe hopefully Cassius has stayed on the straight and narrow. And I mean, obviously we saw his, his mother earlier. It doesn't seem like he went back to his family. So that's probably a good thing. <laughs> and uh, uh, you just hope that he put in the right messages, the right teachings with, with Lysander. That's what you got to hope for. And so they get a distress call and basically they encounter the Ascomani, which are terrifying. Mm, like, yes. Like, <laughs> like space obsidians, right? And that, then that, Lysander that, that, like much, immediately yeah. makes all the wrong decisions. And you're Immediate, like, I was like, wow, listen to Cassius. What the <laughs> yeah. fuck are you doing? It's really awesome action scenes, though. I, I think oh, yeah. some of the best fights, like the corridors, the way that he writes that's really good stuff. So I feel like this is where it really, really dives into the sci fi here. We're really out there on the fringes of space, and it's just. It's good quality stuff until, uh, yeah, hey, well, you know, there's a gold there. And he's like, oh, leave him alone. Oh, nope, got to save on this because it's a gold. And, oh, well, you know, I've been yeah. disarmed. And it's like, come on, man. Space come on. Races. <laughs> Do they tell you? <laughs> right? Nope. Can't they, save they, all these low colors. There's a gold right there. They don't tell you, I think, in this act that it is Serafina. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys it was Serafina, which if people don't remember, right. Darrow did talk to Serafina in Morningstar. Mm -hmm. So yep. that was a, a pretty cool. Back yeah, you, when she was a sweet little girl. Yeah, you don't right. find out until they get to the moon or whatever. The Moonies, which, yeah. by the way, I didn't remember them ever calling them the Moonies in the book. I thought that was something <laughs> that you had made up, Aaron. So the fact that they do call them Moonies, I'm like, okay, well, I'm still going to give Tevro you credit. calls them Moonies, right? Yeah, I think so. The Moonies. Yeah, me and Tevro yeah. were tight. <laughs> Uh, so they do rescue Serafina, but they are uh, they are boarded, and you don't know by who. Uh, Darrow and Severo they attempt to uh, escape Luna, and basically Virginia gives them up, you know, and that was a, a big deal. I gotta say, I gotta give credit here to the dad shit though. I think one thing mm -hmm. that all dads are terrified of is being disappointing to mm -hmm. our children, and you can see that Darrow is really struggling with that. It's basically, like goes back to talking about how. I swore I wasn't going to be like my dad. And then that realization of, oh, shit, I'm just like my dad. You know, cats in the cradle kind of thing. Really, like, really is heartbreaking. Killing stuff. one of your son's favorite uncles. That's probably. Yeah. And then this, here's the thing with, where I'm like at the point where I'm like, OK, well, Darrow just done fucked up. It's, it's like, OK, look, there's still ways to get this under control. Just try, I'm expecting him to turn himself in. We're going to talk our way out of this. Virginia's going to help you out here. Obviously, if she can't help yeah. you. Nobody can. And then when he kills Wolfgar, I'm like Wolfgar. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Razor, <laughs> you know, like, down oh, the right. uh, wow. That is uh, just not such a great a, way to die. I mean, you get this great action scene where you know, like he talks He's about like jammies. who served with me, and then they get that great like hail reaper moment, and he he gets the escape going. You're like, okay, this could work out. Okay, he's not killing anybody. It's fine. And then he kills Wolfgar, and you're just like, well, this is never gonna be okay. 
and then a couple of the howlers kill a couple of the other, and more than one time. A kid raised by Octavia and Cassius. What a resume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gonna make all the right decisions. The, uh, yeah. the dad stuff, though, is so good. Like yeah. that moment with the key. that he gets with Pax is it's so short, but it's so powerful. And uh, you can just tell how much it's ripping Daryl up at the same time. Like, and you uh, see how quick, like, I mean, even though he's like a strange to him, you see how quick Pax is to like yep. forgive him. If you're actually going to be here and not leave again, you know, how quick he is to, to want to forgive him. And I think that's just, I think about, it, I didn't have a great relationship with my dad growing up. And I was like, yeah, I probably, if he, the minute he showed any attention though, I, I let all that shit and resentment go. I was ready to be on board. And then he'd leave again. You know, it sucks. It's just so, incredibly hard. And he has something yeah. later on too, where he's talking about how he feels awful about, keeping Severo away from his family and stuff. It's just really good stuff here. So I'm, mm -hmm. I don't think Pierce has any kids, but I'm like, he's, he's yeah. writing like he does because man, this is, this is just this his little baby stuff. EO. It's a really good compare it. Like the a dog. comparison point between like Severo and Daryl and like the choices that they make, like Severo chooses his family. Daryl feels like he has this responsibility to foster this war that he created. And, and like, he doesn't have an option. He almost like has to just give up his relationship with his son just because of, all the other choices that he's made in his life and, uh, and that's if, just heartbreaking if he <laughs> like, did stay and stay with pax and go to jail possibly we wouldn't have had a book <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, yeah, one thing that i like is you can see he's actually like without saying the words he's kind of jealous of how great of a father severo is right he's kind of jealous of that you know yeah. he's like i wish i could do these things you know and so yeah he's like almost scared of pax Yes, you know, heartbreaking you know. stuff. So it's, it had to be even better for that relationship to to see him killing Wolfgar, you know, standing right there watching. <laughs> it's really, really great. It's it, was, it, was like him, it was accidental. It was accidental. But when you're, when you're when you're already, you know, committing treason, you know, it's probably not. They're not going to give you the benefit of the doubt. On yeah, that <laughs> but it does kind of. You seal. are trying to escape him. Yeah. <laughs> it it seals the already uh, bad relationship that he now has with uh, Sefi um even further so then you know it's like there's no way she's gonna go with him after yeah. that mm -hmm. yeah yeah rough stuff so that takes us into part two which is called shadow so let's get back to lysander and cassius here they are taken prisoner by the raw family if you guys remember morning star i said you were gonna get more of the raw family now i'm gonna be straight up this is my favorite part of the book mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is where it is straight yeah. song of no, ice no. And fire stuff i love the stuff with the raw family so so good they are i mean you've already got this drama going on with uh with romulus and is it is it dido or is it dido i don't know if dido. i'm saying the right dildo i, I have no idea if i'm saying that. <laughs> it's not it's not, not, sure it's not uh, but, <laughs> but uh yeah I, I love this stuff i mean uh diomedes is like refusing to or Di love diomedes he's the ones like refusing to to fight yeah it's, mm -hmm. it's so good I, all this stuff is just excellent excellent diomedes it's, is like cassius yeah mm -hmm. Definitely. Like the, it's probably the only one who actually has a chance in a fight against Cassius. Maybe is Diomedes. probably better. He might yeah. be better. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that, that's the one where I'm like, well, I'd like to see that, and I'm like, but I like Cassius, so I don't want to see that. But mm. you know, Cassius get, is an old thirty year old now. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> he's probably got creaks in his knees when he stands up. <laughs> now, you know, but I just I, I love this stuff. This is a, a part where a lot of people have said it's where it got like really hard for him because there's so many names mm. and there's so much going on. Yeah. And I'm like. As yeah. a season song of Ice and Fire Reader, I loved it. This was exactly what I wanted because uh, just it's about very Song of Ice and Fire, very Frank Herbert's Doom with the Warring Houses stuff that I like and the inner turmoil within those houses. Just such terrific stuff. I love it. And I love the setting, but also how we learn more as they eat a meal together and about how they withhold, you know, servants from their children until they're old enough and yeah, I don't they're know, kind of sticking whole... more to the iron gold tenants. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the their whole society up, up there. Brian, it happens there, but a, a little later. I mean, I, we can talk about it now. I mean, how he mysteriously knows how to play piano, uh, Lysander. Wow, um, what's it's in his lockbox. Yeah, he's got, I think, I think that uh, he might have had some repressed memories. You hear usually about uh, usually repressed memories or when you either had a very trying childhood or something very, very, very bad happened. So or maybe someone erased or, your memory. Or maybe someone got in there and said, delete it. You, you know, know, you never know. You never know. So there, there are, there are nice little snippets. I'll say that you will recognize on a reread that you wouldn't get your first go through that yep. are, are really, really good. stuff. Like 
does he know what his mother's face looks like? Yeah, it is we interesting. Like a lot of his thoughts about his mom are, are very interesting in this mm-hmm. book. Uh, so Serafina was actually on a mission to get this proof that Darrow did indeed mm. not only bomb the shipyards of Ganymede, but that Romulus also knew about it and just, you know, it's not going to say anything. He suspected. He He's knew. Suspected. Yeah. Right, right, right. And, He's smart enough to figure it out. And, you know, they do that stuff that you wouldn't expect in a Red Rising book. They say, we're going to take this to trial. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know you're just like, all right, we're going to fight now. But it's like, okay, all right, so we're going to slow things down a little bit. It's very, very different. But, you know, that, that doesn't stop Pierce from making sure he finds a way to have many, many sword duels in this. Guy. You're right. And they're all really, really great. But, uh, yeah, I just, I just can't get enough of all the stuff here. But uh, they do eventually find out who Cassius is, and he gets challenged to a duel basically to protect Lysander's identity, which mm-hmm. is probably a, a good, good move. You know, which it, then it, Lysander throws away conveniently. Unless, unless you're on team <laughs> fire Lysander out of the airlock, then you're no. like, okay, well, you know, maybe, maybe that's a, that's the honorable thing. Obviously I don't imagine you spend 10 plus years with someone and not grow affectionate of them in one way or another, you know? So, I mean, Cassius, I mean, he's heart of gold, right? You compare it to Han Solo. He's got the heart of gold. He says he doesn't care, but you know he cares. He does, yep. And and this duel is these duels are incredible. I just yeah. love, oh my like, god! And one my after honor the other. remains and the, favorite yeah. part of the book. <laughs> favorite line. Cassius moment in the series is <laughs> yeah. him just laying out this entire family. I'm gonna lay you guys out one by. Like how many more cousins one. do you have? Oh my god! I was like, he's gonna go through the whole lineup. This is gonna be great. I love it. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, and then he just just his boss line every single time. Yeah, the my honor remains line is. I think that's my favorite line in the whole series for sure. This is the most. My I, I always yeah. I always credit uh, Darrow for having those big moments, but I was like, this is this is on par. I think yeah. this was this was, that was really really great stuff. But of course, like you said, Lysander has to go and screw it up to save Cassie's life. And then what do you know? Cassius dies anyway. Dies anyways. Oh, right. Maybe you should have spoken up sooner than yeah, you were going to yeah, do it anyway. If you're going to, if you're going to, you know, give yourself up for what Cassius is clearly ready to die for, maybe you do it sooner. That's like in the movies when someone tells you to, they're going to hold everyone back while you run. They're going to give themselves up. They're going to sacrifice themselves for you to run, and you just stand there and watch for ten minutes. It's like fucking life. Run. I stand <laughs> <laughs> and life. I mean, even if he ha- hadn't given it up in that moment you know that he would have folded you know right in the next scene so this duel is better than the gala hot take i don't think so i think this might be my favorite razor fights the whole series i i, I don't know it's just it's i don't think that's too hot of a take yeah i like that they're it, equally it epic it would be mild it would be mild it would be a mild take but yeah man what are we talking about am i missing in the conversation about the diddling what what uh, is going on oh, here? That's a Holocaust yeah, thing. The brain diddling. <laughs> oh, okay. don't worry about it. <laughs> Sorry, you want to get brain diddled? Listen to Howler Pub. You know, I've been reading Dark Age, guys. You never know. You know Dark Age is like, <sighs> we'll, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> we'll, we'll show you the diddling later, Mike. <laughs> <off air. laughs> All right. Let me look through some don't of these comments. I haven't missed anything here because uh, I'm sure we're, we're just glazing over. Good call out, Daniel. I forgot about that. <laughs> Uh, Dalinar, yeah, we got the Dalinar from uh, from uh, from Stormlight Archive. I could see that. Mm-hmm. When Cassius sees another cousin to duel, and Sir Leo DiCaprio pointing meme here, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> or Spider Man, yeah, <laughs> Spider Man's pointing at you. Yes, it's good. Uh, so yeah, yeah, great, great stuff. Uh, so with Cassius, at first, I'm like, he's not dead, there's no way. And I'm like, okay, if they're trying to do like this Obi Wan kind of arc. This right. is Lysander's Luke Skywalker moment. He's had the training. Now he's got to learn how to make, you know, hope that he learned the right lessons. Is he going to be Anakin or is he going to be Luke? You know, that's the way that I look at right. I, I think even Pierce himself said at conventions, he always goes back to Star Wars. You yeah. know, so I'm like, okay, <laughs> is this going to be Luke? Is he going to take those teachings that he had for five minutes from Obi-Wan Kenobi and learn them? Or is he going to do like, you know, uh, Anakin who had that lifelong leeching teachings from uh, Obi-Wan and didn't apply them at all, so. I think that's kind of the arc you got going for. Is he going to be like Obi Wan and be a, a ghost? Oh, yeah, Cassius. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> ghost. I don't know if Pierce is going to go that Star Wars either. Hey, you no know, crazier things have happened. You know, maybe oh, he'll do he his uh, his inner eye thing, and maybe he'll, yeah, uh, he'll, yeah. Uh, maybe no, but we are. we were convinced Cassius was alive because we were like, show me the body. Like I'm always Pierce, show me the body. Yeah, Pierce but, never like lets you let someone die in the background he always like wrenches the knife over and over (laughs) you know so it it was kind of weird that he just like 
died off camera basically yeah yeah and i think that's be- because pierce is that type to be like oh you think it's out you know, yeah, that's you know adorable that you know. yeah <laughs> uh but yeah, yeah 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 it was it was not easy it's, it's basically they're gonna go and desecrate his body i'm like jeez oh, yeah not exactly the uh the burial in space that i would hope deserve for, better for, for, for one of our one of our legacy characters i guess you call them. it's weird to call you know a 30 year old a legacy character but i, I guess it's <laughs> When they start so young, yeah. So uh, Lyria, and uh, she's in Hyperion City, and she meets someone named Philippe. And I'm going to be honest, guys. First read, it wasn't until about the third or fourth chapter that I realized this was Ephraim. <laughs> I had no <laughs> idea. I even had gotten to an Ephraim chapter, and I'm like, what's he talking about? Yeah. <laughs> so That's did you guys catch it earlier or not? I think so. I think so, yeah. <laughs> I was like, once, I once, I mean, it's been a once while Ephraim was so. like, talking about it then you're like oh shit yeah i might not have caught it like the first no not like when we first right meet Philly. yeah definitely on reread yeah, yeah, yeah. show me the body show me the body, show me the body. uh lord oh yeah i'd rather have a lauren ghost for uh force ghost because uh, <laughs> then he'll be like darrow's a what <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah we that. might not want a lauren ghost <laughs> Yeah, see, it was several. Even a body wasn't enough. We were still like, nope, nope, can't be dead, can't be right. dead. Yeah, I don't know that. That's that part. In Morning Star happened so fast. I don't know if I was able to even process what had happened before. You know, we got yeah, kind of a rush things were reaching. moving quickly at that point. It was so yeah. fast. But uh, it turns out that the heist is to steal Pax and Electra. So, um, wow, okay, that seems ballsy. But you know, hey, if you got the best guy on the job, uh, but what I love. Like- what? You know, this is a going to the gutter type of heist. Like, let's not steal children, Ephraim. Yeah. <laughs> how yeah. about we? How about we back For out? All the terrible things that he's done. We still love this him. Probably well, the worst. Is Seffy that's like, yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't deal in kids. What is this shit? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty messed up. I think that that part where uh, you find out the the one I can't remember the name, but one person in his crew who had been traitor and. Mm-hmm. Ephraim says to let her let her go, and they're okay. And they drop a rope. Oh gosh! Oh, the building. Yeah. oh shit! That's some Godfather. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, this he's, uh, got me definitely the first time. Like this, I you could yeah. We know they're setting up this big heist, but definitely had no clue that they were going after the no, kids. Right? Like he does a really good job of like showing you that they're planning, but you don't really catch on to it. And then you think it's another. Treasure? You can definitely kind of see it a little bit more on the reread, but. It's it's well hidden for sure. Oh, for sure. Uh, would you say here? Uh, Ephraim knows what he's doing. Uh, like 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 they like they did kind of say though. Well, yeah. it is kind of this or die. You yeah. Know? I don't think it's going to be a quick death. You know, so not one uh, you'd want. Getting paid doesn't hurt, you know, but you know, living <laughs> probably probably better. Uh, I am like totally convinced that Kavax got killed off in that scene, though. I am totally like yeah. shot. He does get shot twice in the side. And he's, he's a gangster. Melting. He like he just like melting. rip somebody in half. <laughs> it's like oh my well, god. He crushes uh, Dano. Yeah, Dano. it's crazy. Love him, love him. So yes, I was, I was happy when he said, "Yeah, he's alive, sort of." You know, so who knows what shape he's in? But uh, but but yeah, all, all good stuff. And my, actually, my favorite part of all of this whole heist thing. Is my girl Victra showing up and she is not having any of this shit? <laughs> and her the line, armor. Darling, I am the danger. I was like, Oh my god, I love this woman. I love her. I love her. And so I'd say, that's the mama bear. I don't think anyone this this galaxy is gonna try to cross. So uh and isn't she like eight months pregnant this yeah. whole book? She's got the pregnancy. Yeah, she's armor. got the pregnancy yeah. armor. <laughs> but she's like to full term, yeah, and then she's like, much. I'm gonna hang on to it a little longer. I'm like, did she actually have some did she commission someone to make pregnancy armor? I'm like, well, this is like what the third or fourth <laughs> kid. Yeah, she probably got it on hand just yeah, in case. Right. You know? yeah, so. yeah, yeah, Extra she's, she's getting <laughs> maybe maybe the armor like forms to your body. It's like smart armor. That's true. Oh, could be. be like a be chemical based, like, like, the, like the razors are. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. There we go. See, we got to think futuristically. Yeah, we're patenting that. <laughs> so uh, I, I guess uh, what holiday kind of saves Lyria here. I, I guess you'd say that. I, I don't really know, but uh, the, Victor isn't going to let that one go. And just, just so you know, guys, is she Victor does still end up winning that one in the end. I, I won't lie. At the end of it, uh, with the with the uh, the Barca in the regards, I'm like, oh. Pierce has been reading some. He was watching Game of Thrones when he wrote this. Okay. Uh, awesome line. But still, I was like, did she just get stabbed or did she just get apprehended? And I'm like, right. right. She wants the information, you know. But at first I was like, and it's like one of the first Browns we interact with. Yeah, Brown. Yeah, yeah. Brown. Yeah. Hmm. 
That's at the end of the book, though. Yeah. Are we there yeah, yet? Right. right. <laughs> uh, is iron is iron rain the best phrase in the books, and why? I mean, I, I saw like like gory damn bloody damn, but you know, I, I think anytime that they, they call for an iron rain, it's awesome. Yeah. So. It's a great description of what's of going what's on. happening. Yeah. Even though the last iron rain in this book was bad. Very bad. I, I am in favor of a star shell for Sophocles, for sure. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> Everyone has to <laughs> Yeah. Angry mom, Victra. Yeah, she's the best. She's awesome. I love this woman. I love her. I love her. Uh, so let's see here. Darrow and his crew, they decide to go to Earth. I'm like, well, we're going to Earth. I know. What's up? Well, <laughs> Earth hey, is like we know show. where that is. You know? and I love getting that history of what, uh, basically like what the last days on Earth were kind of like. Good stuff. Yeah. Deep Gray, this underwater prison. This love is it. some crazy, crazy sci-fi this stuff. Be, I love it. Yes. it could be its whole own book or movie. Oh, just Deep sure. Grave. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. They meet... Uh, they meet a tongueless obsidian there who they name tongueless. <laughs> I, very I guess creative. A very big question mark at this point. Definitely. Don't really know much about it, but I'm just like, hey, I am all about give me more obsidians all the time. Yes. I always want more obsidians. But tongueless seems to be more than yes. what meets the eye. We were just asking, begging for him, so someone to give him a pen and pencil and yeah, to a piece write of paper to write something down. Like just a tell whiteboard. us your story, man. Maybe he doesn't, <laughs> maybe he's. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't know how to. Maybe he doesn't know how to write. I don't know. <laughs> Someone could teach him sign language or something here. I mean, no one tried. You know. Nothing. Well, I mean, like, we oh. do have Darrow and Severo here. I wouldn't say academics are probably the thing. <laughs> that that is, like, I think Darrow is very smart, they, but I don't think he's quite time. a teacher. <laughs> and Severo is just like, uh, tell me give, what I want to know. I'm going to cut your ear off. Give him the brain know. thing where you sleep and learn history. <laughs> yeah, anyway. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking. You know, twenty. 8th century like uh, I don't even know what century it is uh, that's, a, that's a point of great contention about what year it is in these books it's in the future it's in the future I like that uh, so we basically get to meet Tactus's brother here Apollonius and mm -hmm. this is probably my favorite secondary character in the sequel of books guys I think this guy is so Grand Admiral Thrawn from Star Wars where <laughs> he's very methodical he's very educated he uses his intellect in a way that Tactus never did. I don't think Tactus had that ability. I love how he studies music and things like that. He plays the violin. This is a really, really neat character. I like how he's naked all the time. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'd add that to my pros list, but hey, I'm not going to tell anybody what to like. And love not it. Any stories. Yeah, I, but I think it's cool. You get the backstory about how basically this is like, it sounds like the one guy that Darrow might have actually feared a little bit. Right. He's so crazy. Yeah. Good stuff. And I love how he like broke himself down and and when he's in prison and then like built himself back up into this, like what he is right now. And he's just so nuts. And but in like the most like fun way. <laughs> and like I love when he's just rattling off that entire speech and several's just like, Did you memorize that? Like, <laughs> yeah. what is going on with you? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, he's grandiose. <laughs> yes. And so you learn that the, the Ash Lord basically gave him up, you know, and let him kind of rot there. So he's kind of maybe looking to, to get even a little bit. So it's 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 an unusual alliance, an uneasy alliance, I think. So they suicide squad him, you know, put a mm -hmm. little bomb in his brain, make sure that you keep up your end of the bargain. And then after you keep up your end of the bargain, I'll cut you loose. And it's either that or stay in an underwater prison, you know, for more right rest of your life you know even though it doesn't seem like there's very much very much authority working around there like the the i guess you would call him the the warden isn't really doing very much is he so except getting his eyes popped out <laughs> yeah we can just tell this is like such a rotten kind of like in its core idea it's just kind of like forgotten it's just it's yeah, the bottom yeah. of the ocean on a planet no one goes to anymore yeah. it's just like that's just like the that asshole never a good universe. idea to put all of the bad guys in the same prison <laughs> whose idea was that <laughs> don't we have like you know planets we can spread them out everyone's talking about apple in the comments yep, yep. apple he deserves I, all the love i i didn't think that this was such a beloved thing so it's news to me I love Apple. We talk about Apple constantly in our podcast. <laughs> I have a crush on Apple. <laughs> the Minotaur. So part three is called Dust. 
And this is, we kind of already skipped ahead with Cassius has his duel, whatever. So I guess we could talk about, um, do you think that Serafina and Lysander, is that like a, is that going to be like a thing or is she just weird and crazy and maybe a little bit insane? We think Lysander's a virgin. <laughs> well, sure. I mean, so, he's been hanging out with Cassius, but I mean. The first pretty girl who's. I think she's too much woman for him, but he would like. He'd like he'd any like it if he PC could. That makes him easy to control. Yeah. You know, I think about if, if if I had been a virgin and this this totally smoke show girl had just been like naked around me, act like it was no big deal. I would have done whatever she wanted, anything at all at his age. So yeah, I think that would he, make it pretty. I think control. she clearly has an agenda, and you know, yeah, she's she's it's working. <laughs> right. Yeah, she can tell that she's just got. A it's, lot going on. It's underneath just a the nickname surface. Spencer for Apollonius, but it. Yeah. It, I, I at first I was like, why is everybody calling? Why is somebody talking about Apple? I'm like, oh. I think they call him Apple in the book too. Do they? Or is that just us? <laughs> no, uh, several calls him Apple. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah Sarah Fonda. She's a, she's a, she's a little nuts. She is a little nuts. Uh, but yeah. uh, that's why I think it would make it would make Lysander easy to control. You know, because I look at her like a like a Marjorie Tyrell to to. Uh, Joffrey, when he was like complete batshit, but even she found a way to control him. You know, it's called <laughs> boobs. Boobs do work on teenage boys, especially yes. ones who have never seen them before. <laughs> you know, so I, I don't know. I just think that there's 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 a lot going on there. And, and she's and, clearly an an agent for her mother, right? So yeah, definitely trying you know, to. She sneaks into his bedroom and is like, "Do whatever Dido wants." You yeah. Know? yeah, and then you got uh, what the. Uh, Romulus' mom, who's like, hey, I need you to help me bust Romulus out right. here. You know, so it's basically Gaia. like a war, and it's like, Gaia, Gaia, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's where we get the piano scene and all that stuff, which is really, really awesome. But uh, Gaia's kind of scary. Again, it's not <laughs> fair. You got this old lady telling you what to do, or yeah. I've got this hot naked girl over here, let me think. You know, it's just, it's again, he's what, 18 in this? Yeah. Did he, it was over. Yeah. He never had a chance. Never had a chance. I did think that they would kind of play it a little longer, but he's like right away. Right, like, right oh, away. I'm gonna do it. Up. I did like it. Gaia and her Obsidian's relationship. What was his name? Oh man, he gets remember. his hand cut off. Yeah, not so good. He's like an old guy. But that was cute. they did have a sweet relationship. Yeah, there's so many hands and limbs that get cut off in these books. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. Uh, yeah. See, see, Dido, Dido. Everybody talking about Dido. Uh, the trial is is good. I, I gotta say that the scene uh, where he says goodbye to where Romulus says goodbye to Dido, and you expect him to say something like really like boss, and he's like just you've been like the love of my life kind of thing or whatever. You know, basically, like let's go out on top. I am actually quite emotional when he's making this walk to the dragon. Oh. I think that's oh a really gorgeous scene. It Thank really is. Oh wait, here let me let me get some. One of my favorite scenes in in the entire book series for sure. Nice, nice. The yeah. Romulus quote. It's. I'm good. so. Sad I will love that you till the sun dies, and when it does, I will love you in the dark. Yep. <laughs> I'm so sad that he didn't actually make it all the way to I the. No, I was room. like, man, I really like this character. <laughs> I can't wait to see what he does in the seat. Well, okay. Well, it's just <laughs> it's just like Pierce to like. He knows that you want him to make it, I know. He oh, won't and so he won't. He away. won't give it to you. Away from the the tomb. Oh man! And then they're like, uh, I like what Diomedes says about him, like talking too much before he goes. Is that Diomedes? I think so. Right. Oh, I thought it was like the Ash Lord or something. No, I think it was like, Diomedes. Uh, also, what he says to Diomedes talking shit. is also incredibly yeah. like, touching. Like the he's like, "You're the best son of." father could ask right. for just like oh my god <laughs> yeah it, it's it's tough stuff it's tough stuff and i just i, I liked the romulus character a lot i mean i liked him yeah. in morning star yeah. he's fantastic we need a so. yeah we need a romulus ghost yeah romulus and lauren together he's like That'd actually be cool. he like <laughs> embodies i feel like what golds think how do i say are. this without spoiling <laughs> something that happens in dark age we need a romulus clone <laughs> How about that we can do clones right just bring them back bring them back make it happen asx yeah. mock do it yeah. so uh ephraim ship is contacted by the queen of the syndicate who basically tells him to uh turn the ship around he's like get bent uh you know basically he's he's, he's had a, a crisis of conscience he's like i'm not gonna do this i'm not gonna turn these kids in to this life uh, he's he's in pretty bad shape he's bleeding a little bit 
you know yes. so uh yeah Got shot a little about bit. The, the heist of the children yeah is fantastic well, talk about electra how insane <laughs> is that and shit the ha- all the hatchet face stuff <laughs> yeah. and the way ephraim talks to her is that so dialogue funny. is really good oh, it's, it's, so if you've ever if yeah. you've got that point like look i couldn't talk to kids at all before i had kids <laughs> and now it's amazing it's like a new talent I, kids are complete strangers i come up i can be witty with them i can be sharp with them <laughs> i can say all this like totally like savage You're stuff like, that i shouldn't Ephraim. be saying and i get away with that's what makes me when he's calling her like his hatchet face and shit. It's so good. It's so good. But I'm like, man, she might be a little crazy. I'm like, well, oh yeah. <laughs> look at her parent picture of plus several. You think that yeah. might be a little bit of crazy going on along in there. So <laughs> well, when Ephraim looks at her, is like, you're freaking me out. <laughs> like <laughs> uh, that whole, all that banter is just it's just top notch. Perfect. But, uh so the the queen of the syndicate, I guess, or someone, they basically have like a kill switch. They take over the ship. They start turning it around. Ephraim says, well, uh, freedom or death. And decides he's just going to blow up the engine, you know? So uh, exciting, exciting way to yeah. end the book uh, on a cliffhanger. Again, I'm, gl- I'm glad I didn't have to wait. Now, look, I've had a big cliffhanger uh, for the last four years with Dark Age, but I yeah. don't feel like Dark Age's cliffhanger was as brutal as this. No, that's, that was... that's messed up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you don't get an answer on it for a while. Yeah. That, yeah. You start reading. And then, like, what happened again? Do you think Pax is kind of creepy? Look, I, because I look, Lyra came off a little bit unlikable, I think, when she just like full on attacks Pax. Look, I understand right. where she's coming from. I do. I think just the parent in me is like, yo, yo, leave the kids alone, man. I don't man. think Pax is creepy. Baby Pax? Pax? No, I don't think Pax is. I didn't get creepy vibes. I get like nerd vibe. Yeah, he's very yeah, nerdy. He might be a little bit of a dork. Yeah. But yeah, but still, I, I, I feel overprotective when Lyria starts like snapping at him at that party a little bit. Yeah. What have you been through, Lyria? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that we got Lyria and Ephraim both have crazy, crazy cliffhangers to end this book. It's mm-hmm. just, it's just kind of unfair. Uh, uh, so, so I guess Lysander's story kind of just ends where he's just saying basically he's gonna, he's gonna join them against. Right. He just. I guess you call it the society yeah. remnant. Yeah. Society yeah. Remnant. He's like, All right, Dido, sign me up. I guess I have. He's like, I'll up. go talk to the society. So for basically, you, basically, yeah. My he, worst. He's like, fear, I'll be the king. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My worst fears have come true. He's going to do exactly what I said he would do if you right. didn't fire him out an airlock do Damn you it. think lysander is the light bringer yeah i i don't know it's all way... dark age yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. let's the just say that... that there is a very famous hashtag that developed during the reading of dark age <laughs> yeah. and it was a very very good one and you'll see you'll see why but uh, the, the darrow's uh kind of the last arc here of the book and it's it's uh-huh. all the stuff you would expect this to me is like this is the most red rising this Ooh. book gets. This whole yeah. assault on the, um, the Ash Lord's uh, facilities here. Really, really amazing stuff. Uh, he He's actually like beat. He's about to get killed and Apollonius yeah. actually saves him. That is some of the most brutal writing I think he's ever done. Just like, oh my God. Yeah, Darrow's about to get scalped. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I mean, the this was like the Golden Sun Iron Rain, except like t- even turned up higher, like in more violent. Just... And <laughs> you I don't mean, know what's going on. It has that great line where he like busts up all those blues and trying to get into their ships. And he's just like, and I turn on my gun and just turn meat and or men into meat or whatever. Is and, this meat of men? Yeah. 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 Meat of, meat of men. Meat of, meat of men. Yeah. the next one, right? Or meat yeah. straw or some shit. <laughs> yes. Carpets one, yeah. Uh, Spitz, uh, he uh, has Lyria, but Lyria is under Virginia's protection. Lyria gets point. stabbed in the chest and, by and, a brown and, uh, with a needle. At the end. Uh, in the a, shower. Yeah. By, by the Barca. The Barca. And guard. what did you think about his decision to like with Apollonius, where he's like, "Just you can do your thing. I'm not gonna. T- uh, I'm not gonna blow your head like, off. I, but well, I'm not gonna I, give but I'm you your... keeping the prisoners. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna give you your cousins either. Here's my thing with Darrow. Is where I keep saying, make a right decision. Look, I've been talking this whole episode about you should have done this with Lysander. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that letting Apollonius go is not gonna come back to bite him in the ass. He's not. Gonna, he's not gonna get Minotaur horns up his ass at all. At all. <laughs> Maybe you know, he wants him up there, Mike. 
<laughs> well, I mean, who knows? He, he does get lonely in space. You know, he does seem to be we, going on these uh, these multi year campaigns. You know, we so. can't skip past though that they burn an old yeah. dying man yeah. alive. That's true. I forget. Yeah. I was stunned that when you do find the Ash Lord, he's basically been this bedridden old man for years. Yeah, and they've just been and that Apple out. knows about it. And it just like yeah. you can feel like something's going on in this whole section. It's just like something is not right about this. Not right. Not right. Not right. Something's not adding up, but you can't put your finger on it, and then it all just makes sense as soon as that. Yeah, and Adelania's yeah. forces is there to, to fuck them up, and in, in the out. And so basically, they're 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 screwed. They're in deep yeah. shit. He tells them that you know we've taken your kids, which again before this, Severo and Darrow have another not quite like the knockdown drag out like they had Morning Star. There's no actual like you know punches thrown this time, but no it, tears. Uh, it probably hurts more. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. Severo's it hurts me more. He's done with it. He wants to go home and be a dad. I and mean, they have a full on breakup. This is yeah, they break they up. That's yeah. it. That's it. Like I was, I was like, Sever, what are you doing here anyway? You don't need to commit treason. I, I understand bros are gonna be bros, but there's a point where you gotta be like, I got a wife and kids now, man. I can't I can't There's be going off go gallivant around the galaxy every time you get a wild hair up your ass, you know. So I, I get it. I get where Severo's coming from. It hurts. Yeah. It hurts. Knowing this romance is pretty much like Clayton brings up a good point that it's Apple that poisoned uh Right, Ash Lord in That's the first place. Said, right, right, yeah. yeah, and he had been poisoning him. Right, yeah, yeah. So many good revelations here, but it's it, it's it's all setting up what's to come in Dark Age, guys. Because there's just some messed up stuff <laughs> with this story arc. Like, like the part of Dark Age is the hard because I'm rereading it right now, guys. And and Darrow's part of the book is the hardest for me to read, not because it's bad, not because it's awful, but because it's so fucking bleak. It's just, yeah. so you are down in the muck. It is the darkest and most brutal that the series gets the entire time. And it's tough to read at some parts. And this is just the beginning of what you're going to get with that stuff in Dark Age. But yeah, with the Ash Lord and actually like burning them alive. I mean, I'm kind of like, mm, burn you motherfucker. But then also I'm like, man. I know. And won, you're he now won. the Ash Lord. Yeah, the Ash Lord is now it's... ashes. Yeah, it happens. But Get it. Uh, that's pretty much uh, where we end. Severo's going to return to go find his kids, and Darrow makes the choice off to, to Mercury. stay and fight. Yeah. And that's what Gotta Darrow do. He save just... the Mercury people who don't want to be saved. Right. I don't, maybe. Maybe we'll know that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's not a spoiler. <laughs> yeah, she would have lived in peace. Yeah, it's, it, it is. It is a lot of things where you feel like his darrow's inner monologue he's he's saying what you think he should be feeling or he's feeling what you think he should be saying but he's not saying these things you know he's he's thinking oh, yeah. the right way but he's making all the wrong decisions the ash lord like presses all the, all the buttons. little buttons right at the end he just like gets in the well, final like puts this doubt in daryl's mind the ash and just... lord was always the one who was two steps ahead of daryl yeah. the whole time right like you look you killed him but i still feel like the ash lord won dude he exactly won. Yeah. beat you and it's it's and we're gonna get more with Atalantia and stuff going forward here. So yeah. that was like, okay, well, this is cool. We're gonna get into uh, to to those uh, to those kids, to Aja's uh, siblings, and things like that. So the 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 grimace storyline is not done. It's not done. Really but not. Uh, yeah, there's so much good stuff coming, you guys. But that was Iron Gold. I love this book. I loved it just Great as book. much the reread. I think it's excellent. I've never understood why when people that have read all five rank it as the bottom one. I don't get that at all. Right. I think to me, because like I said, I felt like this is where it took it from really fun Star Wars expanded universe sci-fi fun to this is Frank Herbert's Dune now. I love where he's going with this stuff, and I couldn't wait to get more. We'll see. You know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like this is this book has some of the best scenes I feel like in the entire series. Like you've got the Cassius scene, you've got the Romulus scene, and you've got all the comedy and laugh out loud, right? And Ephraim like from stuff. This the final scene with the Ash Lord. It's got great action with that is this the book where it's like if i had a bagel i would eat a it. muffin yeah muffin yeah fuck <laughs> yeah oh, cool. several was a bitch for leaving oh, changed my sure. mind well i'm i'm a dad i can only think i would do the same <laughs> thing several did i I'm, I'm sorry i gotta go get my kids he didn't want to go in the first place yeah but oh. that's why I, I feel like this book is like majorly underrated i don't i love it yeah. and i feel like people are starting to come around on that 
I think I loved it way more on a reread, though. I have got that uh, on this yeah. reread. A lot of people that are rereading it a second time are saying they, they enjoyed it a but lot. Like the first time, time, it's like you're figuring out what's going on, and it feels very bleak, especially with right. Arrow. I still think people yeah. were just standoffish about Ephraim and, 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 and yeah, the, the different really characters. Good. Like it just feels different, and you're getting used to that. And so, like once you know what to expect there, and like you like those characters after reading the story for a while Albert, you know? i would choose my family over a billion people i get where <laughs> it's coming from but i get where you're coming from too i do i do <laughs> that's, 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 that this book does that it asks those yeah those, it's, it's those hard it asks characters to make these tough decisions it does i love that i love that. that's why i love so much about the sequels because every every all of the your mistakes are going to come back to haunt you and every decision you make is going to cost lives somewhere and you got to decide well, do I save these people or do I save these people? You know, and do I do this or do that? And what's going to be the fallout from it? Ah, we'll find out. So flying by the seat next guys. time. So, uh, so dark age, when you were going into it, uh, besides looking at it and being like, holy shit, that's a big book. Uh, what were you thinking heading into that book? What were your expectations? <laughs> we and were thinking were you wrong. Cause I was way wrong. Cause stuff, we were I, thinking, I, fuck, fuck, fuck. We have to read this so fast. <laughs> Oh, because you guys were doing the live pod for it, right? We were about like, to meet Pierce. I didn't get through oh, it. Yeah. Uh, Did you get through it before we talked to him? No, we all, we had both. Only <laughs> we didn't have. It. We had like a day. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, when I met him at the signing, I hadn't actually read. I mean, before the Dark Age signing, but I hadn't read Iron Gold, Gold yet. Mm, and he basically mm. told me what's wrong with you. <laughs> so yeah, I'll read it immediately, about. sir. You know, and, uh, I'm glad that he did. But uh, I'm trying to remember yeah. back to our Dark Age, like uh, I had. Pod. I don't know if it was. Yeah, we had all these. Um, I can tell you that we were expecting darkness, and it was more. Darker. More <laughs> darkness. Like, dark Age is not just a clever name, you guys. Like, that is probably one of the it's most the brutal, darkest book. grim darkest books I've ever <laughs> yeah. read in my life. And uh, yeah, no spoilers, but Ben had to like force me to yeah. <laughs> keep reading. I, I was listening to you guys' podcasts, and you you were like, basically I like not like you were wanna... struggling to keep going. And we I, do I, have I, a sad. A, Dark uh, Dark Age uh, prediction pod, I believe, and like all of the predictions were wrong. We had we got some right. You got some right, but it was funny just because we were like talking about like one character dying or two characters dying or something like Total, that. Total, yeah. I think I was right <laughs> like, for about the first part, and then yeah. like the second part is like once it gets to what's going on back on Luna, <laughs> everything just went yeah. completely. What the hell is happening? So, yeah. but I will say, guys, about Dark Age is I was kind of indifferent, didn't like her, didn't dislike her on Virginia until Dark Age. Mm -hmm. Virginia is a POV character in Dark Age, and. That's, that's the book favorite. where I feel like Virginia becomes a G and I love her. That's I love my favorite her. POV in that book. Yeah. yeah she's yeah. awesome. I love she's it. Really and I think it gives us those eyes of a politician for the first time. I think. Right. And it's, it's, it's such good stuff guys. So dark age. Look, I'm not going to lie. Be in the, be in good spirits. Cause if you're like already <laughs> kind of like, like me, I was like, it's, it's been raining in Houston for like six weeks straight. I'm feeling <laughs> kind of bummed out. I can't be reading this right now, you know. So I, I get that. I tell you, it will it will get you down. There's, like I said, Darrow's parts in that book are just some of the roughest patches I've ever Goes had reading. Through it, Darrow doesn't make all the best decisions. Well, that's that's that, that's the that. that's who he is. Yeah. That's who he is. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a Darrow Lycos. I do not make the best decisions. <laughs> yeah. card. But yeah. again, with Dark Age, I liked it more more on the reread. It's like. You know, once I had my head wrapped around the whole thing. Oh no, I, I love appreciate. It. I was just like, yeah. this is this is a rough book for some people to get through. I can yeah. see why I can understand like, with why it. somebody would struggle with it being yeah. Us pixies. Dark. Yeah. Well, you're <laughs> I you're a happy ending type person, you know, you like Disney movies. I, I mean it's not to me, it's not just the gore. It's just like yeah. okay, there, there's stuff that's happening on Mercury that's just like, oh my god. Yeah, like I just feel the, like I need to go take a shower. Right. Jesus. Well, oh, nope. No polls. I didn't say anything about that. <laughs> you can't talk to me too long. I'll do spoilers. Well, we know that he's flying into a war zone. Yeah. And you get you get a war zone. A very with some elements. Real look at war, I feel like. Uh I think that's one thing that he did really well in that book is just show you how shit fucked war is. Shit fucked. Shit. And we'll see uh what happens next. In the next two books i don't know how we can go bigger I'm from hoping, dark age i'm hoping we get together to talk about dark age before any of us get our review copies hopefully of lightbringer because i feel like it would be better not knowing some of the answers to some of the questions we're probably yeah, for sure. on that one 
So I, let's I, do I, I it. But uh, I've got to finish it first. <laughs> <I'm>, uh, <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'm, I've been. Reading I, probably, for, I should probably reread. Yeah, it. I, I'm gonna about. I'm, I think I'm gonna start it here soon. Okay. I've been reading it for about a week, and I'm only. <laughs> I'm only like 200 pages in because of that. Mercury. That's a big boy. We'll, yeah. we'll be right behind you. Yeah, it, it's good. Well, thank you guys as always for joining me. And now everybody's a hundred for having us and we're fighting through it. I, I do appreciate this. has been just so much fun for me going through and talking about this series again and getting more and more people interested in it. And, and now that uh, hopefully I'm going to have Pierce on the channel probably before I talk to you guys again. That's nice. that's, 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 that's the news that I have. We've, we've got a date. The thing is, I don't I don't know yet if it's going to be a live thing talking to Pierce or if he wants us to record it, maybe release it closer to Lightbringer. I haven't really talked about it yet, cool. but that Pierce has finally gotten in touch and we are going to talk. And he is aware that I champion his books a lot. That's that's, that's <laughs> makes me excited. Makes me excited. Good. So, uh, awesome guy. You guys have talked to him before, but, you know, this will be my this will be my I'll be I'll be like Lysander with with Serafina, you know, and Pierce is hopefully not going to be walking around naked. Or, well, you know, who knows? Like, that might raise the viewership. Who knows? You know, if you guys do a live, we'll definitely be in the chat for that one. Yeah. yeah it's going to be exciting. I'll let you guys Pierce know. Pierce talks right. about as fast as you do. So it'll, <laughs> it'll be, I, I'll have trouble keeping up. The thing is, I had like a job interview and I was like, you're talking too fast. Dude. <laughs> yeah, so I, I do that. I do that. I think it's because I, I have your brain's going fast. And I'm like, I have to keep these videos under 20 minutes, you know, but I'm like, I got so much to say. Yeah. Got to fit it in. All right, next video, because it's Dark Age, I'm going to talk super slow. Yeah. <laughs> we need to talk extra fast. Yeah. <laughs> all them happy on hour. Mercury. All right, well, thank you, everyone, for watching with us and commenting and all that stuff. And we will talk to you guys next time. Howler Pod, guys, check them out. I've got the link down below. I hope they're going to be having new episodes here pretty, pretty soon. To talk yes, about. very soon. Very exciting. This is a tease. <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for hanging, and uh, 